Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ashwati Sinan. I'm doing my third year residency in Usmani Medical College, Hyderabad, and my topic is Artifact. In computer tomography, the term Artifact is applied to any systematic discrepancy between the CT numbers in the reconstructed image and the true evolution coefficient of the object. We can seriously degrade the quality of images, sometimes to the point of making them diagnostically unusable. To optimize image quality, it is necessary to understand why artifacts occur and how they can be prevented or suppressed. Types of artifacts, they can be divided into physics-based, patient-based and scanner-based artifacts. Under physics-based artifacts, we see beam hardening, volume averaging, photon starvation and understanding. First is beam hardening artifact. Cause, when the beam passes through a dense object, lower energy photons get absorbed while higher energy photons are transmitted. The mean energy of the transmitted beam increases and the rays become hardened, resulting in this registration of Two types of artifacts can result from this effect, cupping artifact and streaks in the diagram. First is cupping artifact, where we see uh, the excess passing through the middle portion of a uniform cylinder fa fa cylindrical factor are hardened more than those passing through the edges because they are passing through more material. The mean energy increases and hence the center is assigned a lower Hounds field unit. This can be corrected. Streaks in dark bands. In very heterogeneous cross sections, dark bands of streaks can appear between two dense objects in an image. This is beam hardening artifact in chest where we see bright and dark streaks from the SVC due to contrast within, which may sometimes give, give the appearance of aortic dissection. This can be resolved by use of saline glass. This is beam hardening artifact in the posterior fossa where we see alternate dark and bright streaks in a narrow band extending across the posterior fossa. Cause, beam hardening streaks from the dense skull base follow the acquisition frame. When using a non-tilted gantry, these beams can pass through the posterior fossa. When the reconstructed images are tilted, the streaks appear in multiple images. Correction, use of metal filters to pre-harden the beam so as to filter out the low energy photons. Periodic calibration correction, use of beam hardening correction software, and tilting the gantry or changing the position of the patient such that the dense object does not come in the exposition plane. Next artifact is volume averaging or partial volume artifact. It occurs because of the presence of different densities in a voxel and thus the final density is influenced by high and low attenuation values. They can be caused in a number of ways. One way of partial volume artifact occurs when a dense object lying off center protrudes partly into the width of, width of the x ray. Beam. Here, when the tube is pointing from left to right, the object is within the beam and hence seen by the detector. While when the tube is pointing from right to left, the object is outside the beam and hence not seen by the detector. Another way is if a dense object only partially protrudes into a detector stream, the attenuation is averaged with a surrounding and it will be assigned a lower Hounds field unit. Here we see a, a dense object lying in a less dense background and there are three detector streams, one, two and three. In uh, detector stream 2, the object is filling the stream which results in high attenuation. In stream 3, none of the dense objects is imaged and hence the attenuation is low. In stream 1, the image is only partially imaged, so the attenuation is an average between the dense object and the less dense background. Example, here we see the right upper lobe segmental arterial branch appears to have a low attenuating filling defect. Now this is a CT image obtained with 5 mm slice thickness. This is a CT image obtained with 0.65 mm slice thickness where we see a resolution of the artifact. So correction can be done by the use of thin acquisition section width and thus reduces the voxel size. Next artifact is photon starvation artifact. Cause, when the X-ray beam is traveling horizontally, the attenuation is greatest and insufficient photons raise the detector. This results in very noisy projections. The reconstruction process has the effect of greatly magnifying the noise resulting in horizontal streaks in the image. This is seen in ascites, obese patients and around the shoulders. This is a sagittal CT image of cervical spine where we see significant noise and decreased contrast discrimination. Correction. This can be corrected by increasing the tube current. But if we increase the tube current, the patient will receive an unnecessary dose when the beam is passing through less attenuating part. How can we overcome this? By the use of automatic tube current modulation and adaptive filtration. In automatic tube current modulation, more current is applied when the gantry rotation is horizontal and lower current is applied when the gantry rotation is vertical. This is known as milliamperage modulation. 
just allows sufficient photons to pass through the widest parts of the patient without unnecessary doses to the narrower parts. Adaptive filtration, the software correction smoothens the attenuation profile in areas of high attenuation before the image is reconstructed. Next artifact is blooming artifact. Small, highly dense structures such as calcification and stents appear larger than they truly are. Here we see coronary artery calcification appear larger in this image, but after changing the window width and window level, it appears smaller. Cause very high CT numbers of the structure cause pixel saturation when using typical lookup table windows, causing the structure to appear larger than it is. Also, using a smoothing filter kernel makes smaller bright objects appear larger. Correction. Use a lookup window table that is wide enough so that the displayed pixels are not saturated. Use a standard or sharper filter kernel with an iterative noise reduction algorithm. Reduce the display FOB to improve the spatial resolution and use a small section. Next is undersampling. If the interval between projections is too large, this registration of information relating to sharp edges and small objects occur. It may not have too serious an effect on the diagnostic quality of an image. Since the evenly spaced lines do not normally mimic any anatomy. Appearances, there are two appearances, array aliasing and view aliasing. Array aliasing is stripes appearing closer to the object, while view aliasing is stripes appearing away from the object at a distance. Correction, acquiring more number of projections for rotation, slower rotation speed, use of high resolution techniques such as quarter detector shift or flying focus. Next, we are coming into patient-based artifacts which include metallic artifacts, motion artifacts, and incomplete projection. The presence of metal objects in the scan field can lead to severe streaking artifacts. Cause, they occur because the density of the metal is beyond the normal range that can be handled by the computer, resulting in incomplete attenuation performance. Additional artifacts due to beam hardening, partial volume, and aliasing are likely to compound. Here we see dark and bright streaks radiating from and between the high-density objects like metallic earrings and as in this image. Correction. Take of removable metal objects like jewelry before scanning. For non-removable items like dental pins, prosthetic devices and surgical clips, use of gantry angulation to exclude the metal inserts from the scans of nearby anatomy. Increase the voltage to better penetrate dense objects. Use a dual energy acquisition technique. Use metal artifact reduction software which uses interpolation techniques substitute the overrange values in attribution profile. However, the usefulness of the software is sometimes limited because although the streaking distance from the metal implant is removed, there still remains a loss of detail around the metal tissue interface which is often the main area of diagnostic interest. Then use of thin sections to reduce partial volume averaging and use of beam hardening reduction softwares. Next is motion artifact. Patient mo motion can cause misregistration artifacts, which usually appear as shading or streaking in the reconstructed image. Appearance here we see double contouring of bones of the base of skull with streaking. This is respiratory motion artifact where we see double contouring along the media sternum on the left side with a pseudo bronchiectasis appearance in the left upper lobe. Correction Avoidance of motion artifact by the operator prevent voluntary movement with proper patient preparation and breath hold. Breath hold coaching prior to the examination initiation, use of straps and sedation in pediatric patients, and use of short scan time. There are some built-in features to minimize motion artifacts. First is overscan and underscan mode. The maximum discrepancy in detector readings occur between views obtained towards the beginning and end of a 360 degree scan. Overscan mode can be used for axial body scan, whereby an extra 10% or so is added to the standard 360 degree rotation. Software correction, application of reduced weighting to beginning and end views to reduce their contribution to the final limit. And cardiac gating, where acquisition of images in diced way. Incomplete projection, this is a CT image of the body obtained with the arms of the patient lying down by the side of the body, but outside the scan field showing streaking artifacts. Cause, if any portion of the patient lies outside the scan field of view, the computer will have incomplete information relating to this portion and streaking or shading artifacts are likely to be generated. Correction, proper patient positioning so that no parts lie outside the scan. Now coming to scanner-based artifacts, which include a ring artifact, helical and multi-section artifact, cone beam effect, multi-planar and three-dimensional reformation artifact, which include the and zebra artifact. First is ring artifact. 
if one of the detectors is out of calibration, the detector will consistently give an error as reading at each angular position resulting in a circular artifact. Appearance, here we see concentric circular structures expanding from the scanner IC center which may be seen in multiplication. Now, it may not be always this obvious. Sometimes we see like this, where we, where we see a weak hyperdensity in the pond, which mimics a pathology. Resolution, recalibrate the faulty detector and perform routine preventative maintenance on the detector. Next is helical artifact. In spiral scanning, as the gantry rotates, it is also moving in the direction. This means that a row of detectors is moving in a spiral path. Any object that changes in position or size along the z-axis may be distorted as they will be in different positions for different protection. This is worsened by increasing the pitch and increased contrast between objects and the surroundings. Now, this is serial CT images of a conical phantom wherein we see a change in shape of the object in subsequent section. Next is cone beam effect. Cause, as the number of sections required for rotation increases, a wider column is required and the X-ray beam becomes cone shaped rather than fan shaped. And hence, the area emitted by each detector as it rotates around the patient is a volume instead of a flat plane. The resulting artifact is similar to partial volume artifact for off center objects. Now, this is the usual fan beam where the collimator is narrow, which produces the fan. As the number of sections to be missed increases, we have to widen the collimator, which results in a cone beam. The artifacts are more pronounced for outer detector rows than for the inner ones, where the data collected correspond more closely to the plane. Here, the beam towards the outer det detector looks like a cone, while the beam towards the central detector looks more or less like a plane. Cone beam effects get worse for increasing numbers of detector rows. Thus, a 16 slice scanner should potentially be more badly affected than a 4 slice scanner. Appearance, this is a CT image of a Teflon row. Uh, this is an image from the outer detector row and this is an image from the inner detector row where we see a cone beam artifact in the outer detector row. Correction, cone beam reconstruction algorithm and modern scanners minimize. Stair step artifact, cause it arises when axial images with a large image interval, which has thick non overlapping images, are used to create coronal or sagittal reformatted images, or by the use of an isotropic voxel. Here we see irregular margins along the borders of right axillary and subclavian vessels on a reconstructed coronal image obtained with 5 mm section axial position. Now, this is a corrected image wherein coronal image is reconstructed using a 0.625 mm section thickness axial position. So, the resolution is by the use of thin section data. Coming to the last artifact, zebra artifact. Appearance, we see faint horizontal uh, stripes apparent in reformatted lip image of the abdomen. Cause, helical interpolation process gives rise to a degree of noise and homogeneity along the other axis. Conclusion, artifacts originate from a range of sources and can degrade the quality of a CT image to varying degrees. Design features incorporated into the modern CT scanners minimize some types of artifacts and some can be potentially partially corrected by the scanner software. However, in many instances, careful patient counseling, positioning, and optimum selection of scanning parameters are the most important factors in avoiding CD artifacts. These are my references. Thank you.